I have this 1983 OM617 five cylinder diesel engine torn apart and I decided this would be a good opportunity to explain a problem that you might run into when you go to adjust the valves on one of these older diesel engines. Yes, they have adjustable valves and it's something that needs to be done about every 12,000 miles. I think this is one of the most neglected things on these old diesel people just do not adjust the valves about 15 years ago I came up with these custom wrenches <laughs> this has been one of our best sellers of all time I think I've made thousands of these <laughs> I think I was telling my wife Linda if I have to make any more wrenches you know so anyway these are pretty amazing tools to adjust the valves on these older Mercedes diesels that's 1985 and older the newer ones had hydraulic lifters so what you run into is a problem with one of the adjusting nuts. So what I'm going to show you here is how these nuts work. You'll be able to see them clearly because the valve springs have been removed. The camshaft has been removed. And I know from the emails that we received that a lot of people are running into this because these valve adjusting nuts are getting old. They've been adjusted maybe, you know, a few dozen times and they've been over torqued which puts strain on the threads of the lower nut. So I'm going to show you the problem and then I'm going to show you how you're going to have to deal with it if you should end up stripping out one of these adjustable nuts. I'm going to start out by focusing on these two valves here. You can see the valve stem coming up through the valve guide. Here's the valve guide seal and you have two nuts on the end of each valve. The valve stems are threaded so you can see there's a lower nut which is fairly thin and that moves up and down and then this top nut goes on there and this smooth surface is what rides underneath the rock arm. Rock arm sits on here like this. The camshaft rolls around, pushes down on the rocker and that pushes the valve and opens the valve. So when you go to adjust the clearances, you're actually adjusting the clearance between the rocker and the cam you need to adjust this up and down that's how you get your clearance you're going to use a feeler gauge and once you get the adjustment then you take and you tighten the bottom nut against it without moving the top nut and that's the purpose of these two wrenches one wrench holds the top nut while the other wrench goes underneath and can tighten and loosen it like this and the bend is for the purpose of getting down and underneath the camshaft because you cannot remove the camshaft to adjust the valves. You have to adjust the valves with a cam in place. So everything is fine until maybe you go to adjust one of these valves and no matter how much you tighten it, you cannot seem to get the right clearance with the feeler gauge. It keeps moving on you. If that should happen, it's a pretty clear sign that the bottom nut has stripped and when they strip they strip just partially so they'll still move a little bit but when you go to tighten them down together it will not stay in position now these are a special nut fairly soft steel and they're actually designed to strip out before the valve stem thread strip can you imagine if you strip the threads on this valve, you're going to have to remove the cylinder head. If you strip this nut, all you have to do is remove the rocker arm and get these two nuts off and replace the nut. But there's a risk involved here. If you do that, you're thinking, uh, what, what is the risk, Kent? Well, let's see if I can find a valve here that will show you what the risk is. Let's take this. Let's push down. Oh. <laughs> these will fall down into the engine. If the piston is at the bottom, these will fall down in the engine. You won't be able to get them back out. And then you will have to take the head off. So the important thing is that you have to make sure the valve is not going to fall down in the engine. When you pull the rocker arm, you'll have to remove the rocker arms to change the nut. You do not have to remove the camshaft. But <laughs> if that valve falls down into the cylinder, then you have what I call a big wrench dance. Let me show you how you can prevent that from happening. So how do you tell if a piston is all the way up on top dead center on these old diesel engines? You know, the old gas engines, you just pull the spark plug out and 
stick a piece of wood dowel down in there and turn it over, you can feel it moving. This is a little more difficult with a diesel because you have a pre-chamber and you really can't feel the piston <laughs> because the fuel injector goes into the pre-chamber, the glow plug goes into the pre-chamber, so you're just looking at the pre-chamber, you're not really looking at the piston. So you have to use some other clues. And the best one is the position of the cam lobes. You know, if you're looking at a specific valve, you want to turn the engine over until the cam lobes are kind of both pointing up at an angle. If any of the cam lobes are pointing down, or if the cam lobe is pushing down on the valve, before you take the rocker off, uh, you're going to have to determine all this before you take the rocker off, then, you know, it probably means the piston is halfway down or all the way down at the bottom. So you locate the valve, the subject valve that is bad, you turn the engine over until the cam lobes are pointing up, and then you remove that rocker arm, and then you can remove the nuts and replace that bottom nut. Now, sometimes if that bottom nut is stripped, you really have to pull on it while you turn it. Now, what I do, because you can always make an error, is I put a zip tie on the valve just below where the thread starts. See that? And it can't fall down in here. Look what happens. I didn't put a zip tie on this one. Oh, no. Oh, I got to pull the head off. <laughs> so this is a little safety a thing I've worked up just to prevent the possibility of human error. Uh, if you do make a mistake uh, and you didn't get the piston in the right position, at least this zip tie is going to keep that valve from falling down. Now, if the piston is all the way up top dead center, you're going to only get a little bit of movement. These two valves right here indicate the piston is up. And it's probably all the way up to the top because I'm only getting about a quarter inch of play. So if the piston's up, you can do all you want with these valves and you don't have to worry about them falling down in the engine. So if you ever have to replace one of these adjusting nuts on your old Mercedes diesel engine, now you know how to do it and you know how to do it safely. If you need valve wrenches, if you need adjusting nuts, we have both new and used available on my website. I also highly recommend, if you're ever in here to replace a nut, I recommend that you replace these valve stem seals. These are a common cause of excessive oil consumption. I have a kit with full instructions on how to replace all these seals without removing the head. You can do it and it's done in a similar fashion that I've explained here. So that's something you want to be aware of. Let's say in the last 10 years you don't have any record of your valve stem seals having been replaced. These get really hard. I mean these aren't too bad here. They move but sometimes you'll take these off. They're just you know, hard like cement. So valve stem seals, that's important, but don't forget about the valve adjustment. That's something you should do every 12 to 15,000 miles, maybe 15,000 miles if you do a lot of highway driving. But when you neglect that, your engine can have some really serious problems, including hard starting, poor fuel economy, and so on. I have purchased three diesels that were sold because they had low compression, and some shop told them they needed a new engine, and all three of those diesels only require the valve adjustment to get them running properly again. So word to the wise, pay attention to your valves.